All right, fellow babies, welcome back to Pactor Factor on Sifted.net. Uh, we appreciate your patronage if you're watching real time as a Patreon patron or as a YouTube subscriber. Um, if you are doing either of those or if you're not, please try to remember to link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch Prime account. That's in the show description right below this picture. Um, that'll help us, we get paid, it costs you nothing, not a zero. Uh, so please remember to do it. You have to do it each month. So if you haven't done it in a while, then it's probably time to relink. And again, it's really easy to do. This episode of Pactor Factor is brought to you by DeShazer Ryan Realty. Right now, Doug DeShazer has beautiful lots available adjacent to Kukanusa Lake in Northwest Montana. Pull up your RV and access the hookups or build your own construction. Either way, you have access to world-class fishing, hunting, boating, swimming, biking, hiking, and the internet. No matter where you're looking to buy, make Doug DeShazer your real estate consultant at 406-291-1643. That's Doug DeShazer at 406-291-1643. Today's question from Sifted from Surf Spider. Hey, Pat, what are your thoughts on Jim Ryan's departure as CEO of PlayStation? And how would you rate his time in the role? He claims he's retiring for personal reasons. Do you think there's more to it than that? Who will ultimately take over the role on a permanent basis? Um, first of all, if there's no permanent anything, everybody dies, so you're not permanent. Um, you know, Jim Ryan did what he was supposed to do, so I'll give him credit. He came into PlayStation and they weren't as profitable then as they are now. So he made the company immensely profitable. Um, I will give him a ton of credit for that. Um, he built up, or he, his people, built up their inter internal studio capability under his watch. And I think Herman Hulst is really a great um, studio head and I think their acquisitions have been great. So they bought Insomniac on his watch, and boy, it doesn't get any better than those guys. Uh, so A plus on profits and content, A plus. Um, I think he has not future-proofed the company, and I think he made a serious error in pulling Sony out of E3, because I think, you know, COVID aside, I think Sony started the decline of E3, and I think that hurt the industry badly. Um, did it hurt Sony? Not yet. Will it hurt Sony? Yes. Um, it's bad if you don't have a giant industry event that drives awareness of, of the Sony brand and of gaming as an industry. And I think that Sony is more guilty than anybody of kind of killing E3. And you guys will say, well, what about EA? Well, they had a big event the same days as E3 in the same city, and they showed up to meet with investors and retailers. So no, they were kind of at E3, and Microsoft, same thing. Um, Sony, nothing, just gone. That was a mistake. Um, so, you know, overall, B+. Plus. I, you know, I give them a, an F on some of the small stuff and an A on most of the big stuff. Um, he's leaving because he's 65. I mean, he's he's not a young guy. And I, you know, I think that the guy's been at Sony for 30 years or 35 years, um, it's enough. Um, I'm certain that he has saved enough money to, to afford a very comfortable lifestyle. Um, being a man of a certain age, I can empathize. You get tired after a while. It's hard to keep doing this stuff over and over and over again. And to be fair, you know, I think he's leaving Sony in good shape. Um, who's going to take over the role? Sony management has been really uneven in how they've managed the PlayStation business. So, you know, it was Ken Kutaragi, who was kind of the father of PlayStation and kind of figured out the whole thing. And they kind of unceremoniously dumped him. And then it was Kaz Hirai, who rose to be CEO of Sony. And Kaz went through a succession of his boys to run uh, PlayStation. And, you know, those were Jack Tretton, followed by Andy House, followed by Sean Layden. And whatever you think of those guys, I mean, they all did a great job and Sony was fine. Um, it wasn't until Kaz left, and I don't even know who the CEO of Sony is now, um, that, that Ryan got elevated. And, you know, I don't know what the new, new, the new-ish Sony CEO believes, you know, it, it takes to run that company, 
But I can tell you that um, Jim Ryan kind of systematically got rid of all the Western executives. You know, there might be a few old guys left, but there's really nobody left. I mean, I heard Connie Booth just just left, um, and she's she's older. She wasn't going to be president anyway. I'm going to just go out on a limb here and say some guy from Tokyo or some woman from Tokyo. Um, I, I don't remember her name. There is somebody at Sony, a woman, who is really highly regarded in Sony Corporation. And I, I forgot her name, I apologize, but I have heard that she's the favorite. Um, and I heard this before Ryan retired. I just heard, do you know this woman, whatever her name is, because um, she's rumored to be the next CEO of Sony, but I haven't heard anything since. And since Sony pulled out of E3, they also pretty much stopped talking to me. Um, and I don't, not in a rude way. I mean, the, the, if I ask them the question, they answer always, and they're polite and they're very friendly. But I've just kind of stopped getting briefings, and I just, you know, they invite me. I'm invited to Tokyo for every earnings call and every, every analyst briefing, and I don't go. Um, so I think it's just going to be somebody from Sony. And is Jim leaving the business in good enough shape for somebody to take over? Yeah. You know, will they reverse any of his bad decisions? No. They'll just maintain the status quo. There was a guy in charge for like a year named John Cadera, who was the nicest guy in the world, but he lasted a year. You know, he was in between, uh, I guess he was in between Sean Layden and Jim Ryan. But you know, that was the placeholder, and then they decided he wasn't good enough. Um, so we'll see what happens if they put somebody in. But I would expect it'll be a Sony lifer from Tokyo before it's, uh, you know, somebody like Bobby Kotick or, or you know, John Riccatello. We'll see. My prediction that, that Jim was going to retire is because I know his age, you know. And, and so and when I say he's 65, he might be 64, but, he, but it, I think he'll be 65 by March of 24. Um, and, you know, I don't think it's really uh, fair to expect anybody to work past 65. I mean, that's old. And you get to be 65 and it's just like harder to get up in the morning. Uh, I, I got up at 4.30 this morning. I'm tired. <laughs> it's, it's uh, in fairness, hey guys, it's it, where I am, it's 1.30 now. So I've been up, what, nine hours? It's a lot. Uh, thank you guys who are Patreon patrons and YouTube subscribers for keeping us in business. For those of you who are neither of those two things, if you have Amazon Prime, please remember to link your Prime account to your Twitch Prime account, and the instructions are below. You, you may have to open up a Twitch Prime account, but it costs nothing. Um, link those two things, and Amazon, for some crazy reason, pays Sifted so you can watch me. So that's awesome. Um, so help us out, please, because we need the support. Uh, we've seen that drop a lot because it lapses. You've got to renew it. So if you've ever done it before, it's easy to do again. Please remember to do it.